This presidential election has been a rude awakening for a lot of black people within the black community. We've seen a great divide. You know, a lot of people uh, that want to have their own voice, you found out that um, you don't, you're not allowed to have your own voice. For years, you know, we were told to vote Democrat. When grandmama or, or, or mommy took you down to the polls, she went there and she told you who to vote for. As you start getting old and start seeing the world through your own lens, you start asking questions, you find out that you've never been an independent thinker. They've, they're used to telling you what to think, how to think, and when to think. If you have any questions for the Democratic Party and you're African American, you're, you're looked at as, oh, you must be supporting Trump. What does the Republicans and the Democrats got to do with anything, right? So there is a big, big battleground going on within the black community. And a lot of black women have got behind uh, Kamala Harris. But there was a situation this weekend when Janet Jackson was being interviewed by The Guardian. And he asked her, how does she feel about the prospect of an uh, African-American woman becoming the first president? And, you know, Janet Jackson, Janet Jackson responded with, um, you know, you know what they supposedly said, Kamala is not black. That's what I heard. Oh, man. And when she said that, all, all hell broke loose. Then she said, well, uh, she's both, uh, they, uh, the reporter said, well, she's both I offer. Her father, uh, then she said, her father's white. That's what I was told. I mean, I haven't watched the news in a few days. She calls. I was told they discovered her father was, was white. And when she did that, a lot of people in the community has come against her. I mean, you got black women going against Janet Jackson because Janet Jackson had her own opinion on, on it. And it, this is how divided the community is. But D.L. Hughley also came in, and he got real belligerent and disrespectful towards Janet Jackson. And there's, like I said, there's uh, battle lines drawn now. And I like the fact that Janet Jackson didn't back down. She stood ten toes down. But let's listen to uh, this clip uh Kamala Harris and what she had and what she's been saying since she's been running for uh, president. Check this out. So my mother was 19 when she crossed the world alone, traveling from India to California with an unshakable dream to be the scientist who would cure breast cancer. My mother was a brilliant, five foot tall, brown woman with an accent. And as the eldest child, as the eldest child, I saw how the world would sometimes treat her. But my mother never lost her cool. She was tough, courageous, a trailblazer in the fight for women's health. And she taught Maya and me a lesson that Michelle mentioned the other night. She taught us to never complain about injustice but do something about it. Do something about it. So that's her talking about her Indian mother. And as she should, she should be proud of her mother. She should be proud of her background and where she comes from, knowing that as an immigrant, uh, she's, she's able to rise to the highest level that America has to offer in, in the presidency. And being the vice president, she should be happy for the Indian community. Um, she didn't say much about her father, but when I look at her father, he doesn't look like uh, he, he looks like he may have some form of uh, African in him, but he also looks like an Indian or a, of, of Asian descent. And that's no disrespect. That's no disrespect. But there was a um, j there was a reason why Janet Jackson went off and said what she said, right? Because a lot of people don't know that when Michael Jackson was going through his issues uh, uh, out there in California, when he had the so-called SA charges, uh, Kamala Harris was DA out there. And Kamala Harris has some choice words and says some things. And Janet Jackson and her family, they haven't forgotten it. Y'all remember this? And cases like this can depend on the testimony of the child accuser. In general, uh, the child will be able to recall and recollect with some detail the incident. And that is persuasive to a jury, even if it is the only testimony that is available. Jackson gave a wave when he was released after booking. He's scheduled for arraignment in January. Michael's been a longtime resident of Trump Tower, and last night the Donald strongly reiterated his defense of Jackson with Larry King by going after the accuser's mother. She's had plenty of experience at going after people, and she goes after them viciously and violently, and I saw a story and I read another story about some of the things she's done. 
and I don't believe it. But you know what it's like when an indictment comes down. It's tough. It's presumption. He's t- it's tough. It's tough to win. But I have a feeling he's going to win, Larry. The interesting thing is I've known Michael from many different standpoints. And Michael would spend a lot of time with my kids. I have beautiful kids. And at the time, like at Mar-a-Lago, and even in Trump Tower, the kids were very young. Michael would come, play with the kids. He just loved children. He was not a child molester. And I am certain of that. He loved children. He'd play with my son Eric and my son Donald. And he'd just play with them forever. He loved children, but he was not a child molester. And, you know, that whole final saga of Neverland and the police and what they did was, I think, a very, very, a very, very bad part of my And see, with Janet Jackson taking a stand and her standing on, 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 her, on her own, you got D.L. Hughley, you know, running his mouth. And, you know, he always has something to say. You know, it, it's, listen, these Democratic shields, they always use these entertainers and these movie stars. And, you know, it's not these are not black intellectuals, the economic strategists and all this talking. These are not those people. They're not going to these economic strategists with, uh, 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 within the black community to have any conversations. You got uh, 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 comedians and uh, twerkers and all this stuff speaking. But let's look at this foolishness that D.L. Hughley is saying mean you're not gonna vote for her because she has a white husband then we're not the same but if you're going to say uh she has a white husband you better have a black wife when you say it don't tell me that somebody's latin or or, or, or asian i think that's, that shouldn't be a predicate the predicate anyway but if you are accusing her marital choices you better make sure it's yours in line with the accusations, the accusations you make we are not the same if these are well she ain't black enough i tell you what she's a w- black woman she went to Oakland. She's from Oakland. She went to an HBCU. She's an AKA. She had a boyfriend named Willie. And she got a name. First name is hard for everybody to pronounce. It sounds different than it's spelled. That's black enough for me. But what I do know for sure is that she can win if we decide it is so. And if that is not your goal, we are not the same. Your we and my we are not the same. Now, this guy's a joke. Like, this guy is a blithering idiot. You know? All we're saying was we wanted somebody that actually represents us. That's a representation of us. Um, she's not African-American. She doesn't represent our background and our plight. And again, that's no disrespect to Kamala Harris or her W husband. If that's who she's wanted to marry, then that's her business. But D.L. Hughley, he has some psychological damage. Something's wrong with him. He, he you know, he went on to say, look, um, looks the way she does because she has a mom from India and a dad from Jamaica. Hashtag Janet Jackson look the way she does because she has a she has a plastic surgeon. So uh, uh, team team D. So it gets you know, it gets real crazy. Right. Again, like I told you, you get attacked. You get attacked by your own people. You get a you get attacked by your own people for having um, a different uh, opinion. Right. Then he says, hashtag Janet Jackson interview sounded like a Trump rally. FYI. It's a little ironic to question whether someone is black while you're breathing through the nose of a, of, of, of a W woman. And this is this is coming this is coming from D.L. Hughley, right? So um, some some a couple some black women got upset and they got at him. Then he says then he says uh, all I know is Kamala looks like she did when she was in Oakland, but Janet looks like she did when um, when she was Penny. Um, with what, what, what the hell was what the hell was that iron? Man, like this guy this guy is is all the way a joke, man. Like that we shouldn't that we shouldn't take uh serious. Then he went on to say, uh after facing criticism for her ignorant uh uh for her ignorant Kamala Harris uh comment, Janet Jackson has issued an apology, which was fake. She never issued an apology. Uh, and again, he represents he represents this class this class of black folks that's straight boulet. Straight boule. They go against black people that have a different opinion. Um, you know, we're not all the same. And I had to learn that coming out of black Philadelphia, that black people coming from all different places have different opinions. But he's the way he was attacking Janet Jackson, other black women started to attack him that made him have to apologize. And it got, you know, it got real crazy. But let's look at him. Let's let, let's let's take a dive into him a, uh, years ago when he actually was against Kamala. Well, he said, Kamala Harris flames out. Black people didn't trust her, and they were wise not to. So now, all of a sudden, you're going after black people? 
Because you said black people didn't trust her, so you didn't see her as black back then, but you see her as black now? Man, let's listen to what Tariq Nasheed had to say, and then I'll come right back. Her foundational black American icon, our queen, Janet Jackson, is under attack, ladies and gentlemen. Janet Jackson did an interview, and I guess they brought up Kamala Harris, and Janet was like, well, you know, I heard that, you know, she's not black. They were trying to push the whole Janet, um, um, Kamala Harris, black woman president, all in her. And Janet was like, well, I heard she wasn't really black. I, I heard her father was white and, you know, her mother's Indian. So I don't know. I don't know about the black thing. So they start attacking Democratic shills and tethers started attacking Janet Jackson, just really going in on our good sister Janet Jackson. And Janet didn't say anything wrong. If her uh, Kamala's dad, he's not white physically, but we got to understand there's some people who are dark who are still classified as white. There are people who are brown skin and they are still classified as white. I want y'all to understand that. But Kamala Harris is not a foundation of black American and her blackness period is questionable because they keep trying to crowbar blackness onto her Jamaican dad, Jamaican and black. That's not synonymous because you have Jamaicans who are white. You have Jamaicans who are Asian. You have Jamaicans who are East Indian, who all claim Jamaican. And there's all types of color cast in Jamaica, as we've pointed out. The only blackness Kamala has is going to a damn HBCU. So when people question this Kamala is black narrative, they're right in questioning that. Because for so long, they prom promoted Kamala Harris as an East Indian, which she is. Kamala Harris has always been promoted as an East Indian, which she is. The hypocrisy behind this is the Democrats always talk about protect black women. But you have D.L. DL Hughley uh, going directly after Janet Jackson with some very disparaging, disrespectful comments. But what about what he said about Kamala Harris years ago when he said black people didn't trust her? So you you referred to you referred to her outside of her being one of us. You said Kamala Harris flames out. Black people didn't trust her and they were wise not to. So I'm I'm confused with this DL Hughley crap. This DL Hughley guy, man. You know, he sounds he sounds very disrespectful towards black women and maybe abusive in the way that he talks. I don't I, I I don't talk like that. You know, for you to just go after Janet Jackson because she gave her opinion, you couldn't let any woman do that. You went online and you start twerking, doing all that wild, crazy stuff. Now, as black people, we're looking at policies and we're asking the Democratic Party because we've been supporting the Democratic Party for the last 65 years. And we're asking, hey, listen, what's your plan to stop gentrification in our community where specifically for us, where we can where we can continue to live in the communities that we that we grow in? Uh, we, we're watching you bring immigrants in and provide housing vouchers and money for them, but not us. And we're the ones been supporting you. So these are legitimate questions that should be answered, not a lift up act that's going to affect, that's going to be more beneficial to the immigrants and not us. That's what we're asking. These are legitimate questions, but you're being attacked and disrespected by your own people. The same people that said that, the same people that basically said that Kamala wasn't black because they said, Black people uh, didn't trust her, and they were wise not to. So you saying that she was that she's not black? Uh, that's is that what you're saying? See, and this is this is the hypocrisy within our communities, man. But let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna cut this video short here. Leave your comments in the comment section. If you made it this far in the video, hit that like button. Subscribe to Street Media TV, and remember, I love y'all. To the next time, peace.